So another part of maps that we um, maybe take for granted, but it is still important to really understand is the idea of the orientation of the map. And so if we just take a, um, a basic kind of map here, you got one of Oildale. Uh, usually our map orientation is denoted with a north arrow. So we can see uh, down here on this map of Oildale that we've got our north arrow right there. So we know that north on this map is going to be up. Um, most of the time, uh, maps are going to be designed with north facing upward. However, north can point uh, in any direction if labeled correctly. So just to kind of illustrate that point here is a um, different way to look at the world with north pointing south. And so you can see that um, it's still a correct map. It's just a different way to look at it. But one thing that I think is important to, to understand or to think about is why is north up on maps? And so to really break that down, um, I found this uh, article on, from UCSB uh, Geography. So most modern day maps show an orientation uh, with north at the top of the, the map. Uh, in other areas, different directions were at the top and more prevalent and all directions have been used by different societies to uh, depict the world. But when it comes down to North being commonly placed at the top of the map, um, the big factors are the invention of the compass, the understanding of magnetic North, and then egocentricity of society, mainly in Europe. So a compass points to magnetic North, and Europeans, like other cultures, um, long before noticed that the Earth spins on its axis, and it's relatively pointed to the north star so the idea of um the idea of the fact that we think that we look up to see stars not the idea that we're around planet and that stars are all around us but the idea that we look up to see stars and then we decide to name that one star that we use that they used uh, as the north star the one that was helpful in uh in direction and finding your way so you look up it's north so that's they decide that that north should be up on maps and so it's just it's kind of an interesting to to figure that out um, there are some other articles with the idea of do north and south actually mean anything could we have called it anything does does the concept actually have any meaning to it? It's it's really kind of an interesting idea to think about. So here's just another one of those uh, looks at the world. Uh, if uh, if we didn't consider uh, maps to be so European centric and so focused on the idea of um, Europe kind of being in the center, if we looked at a map. Um, differently and if this was the normal map how would we view Europe would it be the same way that we think about it if this was the way that the map looked at because when you focus in on this map the first thing you notice is Africa whereas in the way that the map usually is um, positioned the first thing you would notice is Europe so it's just something to think about um, the projection of the map and the way that the the map is oriented as to um, what you kind of gain as important uh, when you think about the map and look at the map. So this next section, let's focus on measuring distances on the ground using maps. So uh, the, you guys have done this in, in lab. Um, a pace is two steps. You count on either your right foot or your left foot. And you walk your normal pace. Uh, whether the land is rough or smooth, you want to just come up with a, a gait or a um, pace that you can walk no matter what terrain you're on. Um, our goal is to figure out paces per chain and then be able to figure out how many chains we need to uh, make up the actual distance that we're looking for. 
So when we're walking, if we're practicing here, we just want to pace it out. We want to walk our normal pace. We don't want to uh, think about what anybody else is doing or however many steps or paces it took anybody else. We want to just trust ourselves, walk our normal pace, and figure out how many paces it's going to take us to walk one chain and then from there be able to apply that measurement to our other um, other distances. Um, one thing that's important with uh, turning is that uh, when you're pacing, if you've got to turn when you pace, you have to walk a straight line. Um, so you can't measure curve, you must walk a straight line. Well, if I've got to go around uh, something, I can't take this straight line through it, I've got to go around it. Well, a nice bend would look like this, but if I'm pacing it, I've got to go straight. So I go straight, 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 straight. So I can go, I can pace around corners, but I cannot, I can't make arcs when I pace. I've got to go straight, I've got to turn a little, go straight, turn a little straight, turn a little straight, turn a little, and go straight to be able to measure accurately that um, that curve. If I have to go around something when I'm pacing, I'm going to do something which is called offsetting. So I'm going to walk. Uh, let's start here at the bottom. I'm going to walk up. I see this big tree in my way. I'm going to turn 90 degrees and I'm going to walk a distance until I can get around that object. Turn 90 degrees again back to my original course and go up then turn 90 degrees the opposite way from the 90 degrees that I turned the first time and walk back the same distance that I walked away from the, the tree and that should get me right back on my line and the whole time I'm checking my compass and making sure that I'm taking the right um, the right angles to make sure that I don't um, end up on a different line on this side of the object. Whenever I can though, I want to go straight because that will um, create the uh, least amount of uh, problems. So another thing to kind of discuss um, with the idea of, uh, of measuring distance on the ground is the idea of uh, horizontal distance versus slope distance. So if the ground's flat, it's going to be easy to figure out, and I'm going to be able to look at a map and measure it uh, with a ruler, and more than likely it's going to come out exactly the same. But if I'm dealing with um, any of those contours and I've got slope involved, slope distance and flat ground distance are more than likely going to be slightly different. And so, um, in terms of our relationship between map distance and ground distance, our map scale, um, that relationship is true only true if the ground is completely flat or if you're flying over an area because you're so far up that everything becomes uh, flat and flattens out again. And so in this example right here, we can see that if we just measured between A and B in terms of a flat map distance, that'd be 384 feet. But if I actually have to walk from A to B along this ridge line, that's actually going to be 470 total feet. So it's really important to understand that slope is, when it comes into play, can change um, that distance. And more than likely, uh, if your area has topography, your map um, your map distance is going to underestimate the distance that you actually travel. So let's take a look at it using topographic maps. So here is our basic topographic map. We've got our um, our basic uh, USGS 1 to 24,000 uh, representative fraction, or RF. So here is the area we're going to try and walk. If we measure this out, it measures out to 1 inch of map distance. So right away, hopefully in your head, you're going, all right, well, that means that this, I'll use inches, and this becomes one inch. So that means it's 24,000 inches. If I divide 24,000 inches by 12, then I get 2,000. 
and so it's going to be one inch equals two thousand feet. And so the ground distance, the act, the ground distance here would be two thousand feet in terms of flat. But notice we've got contour intervals, right? So we've got a bunch of contour intervals, a, a lot of little ones right here, and then some a little farther spread out down there. So that means that there's definitely slope involved here. So we want to really um, look at it much more in depth. So I'll move myself out of the way, put myself up here. So did if we were to go walk this out there in the field, are we going to walk 2,000 feet? Nope, because it's a steep slope. So more than likely, because we know it underestimates, we're going to think that it's actually going to be more than 2,000 feet. But we can calculate that out to figure out exactly what we're going to deal with. So how to calculate the actual ground distance. So one thing you can do is you can just go out there and um, walk it and measure it. So you can do this with pacing, using measuring tapes, using a GPS. And there's lots of different ways you can do it. But that's not always possible because, um, you know, that's that's if you have time, if it's a place you're going back to all the time, or you've been able to go out there ahead, a lot of times you can't do it. You, you just have to go out there and figure it out. So it'd be nice to be able to do it know what you're getting into by figuring it out on the map rather than having to just go out there and figure it out. And so we have to really understand slope distance. Now it's a it's a relatively simple calculation as long as you're very comfortable um, with your calculator. So slope distance is horizontal distance or flat distance. If we look here, our horizontal distance. Uh, it equals our slope distance times uh, the cosine of our degrees. And so let's take this example right here. So slope distance equals 75 feet. If we have a 17, um, 17 degree slope, and we put that into our little formula here, 75 times cosine 17, that means our um, flat distance is 71.7. .7. And of course we can work this uh, math problem the other way, and we figure out um, we could go flat distance to slope distance. But let's apply it to our topographic map to be able to be comfortable with it. So our contour interval here, we've got to look. We can see we've got 1160 here. And we know we've got um, five lines in between to our next contour interval. And we know because of our idea of the U's pointing downhill, that we'd be going downhill here. So we've got to figure out um, what we would need is to find another um, reference interval, like this one over here. Let me move myself out of the way. We can see 11, 11, 600, and we can see 10, 400, and we know how much will be in between them, right? Because it'd be 5, 10, 15. Right, so what I do is I say, all right, well, that would be 1,200 feet in those 15 contours. So if I break that down, I'd get to an 80 foot contour. Move myself out of the way again here. So if I'm looking at where we start and we walk here and we finish, we started at 11,600 feet and we worked our way down to 10,480 feet. Once again, this is the idea of taking that um, idea of looking at the flat topo map but kind of giving it that 3D feel to really understand what we'd be doing because we'd be working our way from here and working down uh, the side of this this hill or mountain. Alright, so without accounting for slope, we're thinking about a flat line. But we're walking down the side of a mountain, so it's actually going to look like that. So now we got to figure out how to make sure we're going the right distance. 
right? So we know that it underestimates. More than likely, it's an underestimation. So here's our 2,000 feet. Our actual ground distance is probably going to be longer than that. So here's the, the four-step plan to figure it out. So step one, determine the flat ground distance. We know we said our, our representative fraction was 1 to 24,000. We know our map distance that we measured was 1 inch. So 1 inch equals 24,000 inches, or 1 inch equals 2,000 feet. That's our equivalent scale. And we've got our map distance. We've got our flat ground distance now. Now we want to determine our percent slope. And so that is just the idea of rise over run or change in elevation over the length of your line or change in elevation over your flat ground distance. Well, we started at 11,760. We finished at 10,480. So that is a, a change in elevation of 1,360 feet. And also I know because of the way the circles run and the idea of the U's um, pointing downhill that we walked downhill. So I wrote negative 1,360 feet because we went down in elevation. Now the negative or positive does not matter for calculating percent slope, but it's always important to just denote something like that so you remember, oh yeah, I walked downhill. In terms of my percent slope, so rise over run, so change in elevation, 1360 uh, over my 2,000 feet or my flat ground distance gives me uh, 0.68 or a 68 um, percent slope. So pretty steep. Now for step three I want to convert that percent slope to degrees because if we remember back from a couple slides ago we were looking at slope distance using degrees. And so I can use that with the inverse tangent button. And you can find this on any scientific calculator and that will um, take our percent slope that we got and it you just hit inverse tangent and it gives you the slope in percent. Or sorry, it gives you the slope in degrees. We have the slope in percent. So we hit inverse tangent, gives us our slope in degrees. Now you do want to make sure that your calculator is set to degrees and not radians. So there should be a button that says like D-E-G-R-A-D and you want to just make sure it's on degrees because uh, radians will give you a different uh, number. And then step four is just our final calculation to get our ground distance, which is that same calculation from before, which is your flat ground distance uh, divided by the cosine of the slope in degrees. So our flat ground distance was 2,000. Our slope was 68% or 0 0.068. If I get that inverse tangent of 0 0.068, that gives me 34 degrees. So I take... Uh, my flat ground distance, 2,000, divide it by the cosine of my 34 degrees, and that gives me 2,000 divided by 0 0.83, which would give me 2,412 feet. So my flat ground distance, if I measured it on the map, was 2,000, but what the actual distance is, is 2,412 feet, which 412 feet is a big difference between 2,000 and 2,412. So it's it's important that we understand how to calculate slope even on a map so we can really account for it and really understand where we are and the amount of effort we're going to have to put in when we go into the field. And so let's run another uh, example just to make sure we're comfortable with this. So if we have that same standard uh, USGS um, representative fraction, 1 to 24,000, let's say our map distance this time was 2 inches. So in your head, hopefully you're going, all right, 2 inches, so um, 24,000, so that it's, if I take it to feet, that's 1 inch equals 2,000 feet. Got to multiply both sides by 2, so then that means that 2 inches equals 4,000 feet. Okay, good. Now our slope is 25% or 0.25. We know that we're going to have to get that into degrees using inverse tangent so that we can figure out uh, what our actual distance is. So our distance, our flat ground distance is 4,000 feet. We do that inverse tangent of 0.25. That gives us 14 
uh, 0 0.036 degrees. So I take my 4,000 feet divided by the cosine of 14.036 degrees, and my actual distance is going to be 4,123.1 feet as opposed to just 4,000 feet. So really um, make sure that when I when I calculate slope, that helps me figure out uh, just how much extra work I might have to put in. Now, if we kind of compare the last answer with this answer, we can also then get an idea of the terrain we're working in because for the last one, um, we measured 2,000 feet, but it was actually 2,412 feet. So there was a 400 foot difference. So that tells me that there's, it's either very steep or it's a lot of up and down because there's a big difference uh, between the actual distance that I'm gonna go versus the, um, versus the flat ground distance. Whereas here, there's a difference of 123 feet between the actual distance and the flat ground distance, which to me tells me there's still gonna be some slope involved because there's a, a difference between these two, but not as much slope as that other area because there's only 100 foot of difference between the actual distance and the flat ground dif distance, whereas the other one was 400 feet of distance between them. So it's, it's those sorts of things that can kind of help you give you a picture and help you kind of figure this out a little bit uh, easier. So um, just kind of in closing, there's a lot to gain from topographic maps. Um, they still have a lot of value. I'm going to teach you uh, in the future about um, GIS and um, computerized mapping and um, the importance of that as well, but it's still very important and there's still so much information on these topographic maps. And still you can go into some areas um, around uh, around the, the world where you can't get a signal. So a GPS isn't going to work. And these compass and map skills are going to be still hugely important. So um, hopefully you, you gained a lot of information. And uh, hopefully you can, you can take it and apply it.